to love me even though I'm not her type Purple, orange, pink clouds float way up high A lot of y'all depressed, you don't even know why I'm just trying to live my way I don't have to put it in my bio A lot of y'all throw smoke from the shade I'm six, you gotta do it like this, sir. Seven, eight, I've been dancing since I was six, sir. Every kid on the block that's taking its tack. I've been posting these gems, they've been giving you rocks. I've been fooled once or twice. Now everyone that loves you really gives you good advice. I think that it's nice that they try, but I find I'd rather follow signs from the dreams of my mind. Yeah, yeah. I've been fooled once or twice The girl you think is flirting is just being really nice It's cool but it's like I've been getting confused No clothes and no likes But she follows me twice Nice Sometimes I gotta treat people like their phone companies I never believe what they say Okay You know when they tell you they have a deal Deep down it's not real and yet you still pay Come on Five, six, you gotta do it like this, sir Seven, eight, I've been dancing since I was six, sir Every kid on the block that's taking its talk I've been posting these gems, they've been giving you rocks Welcome everybody, welcome to the show. It's your boy Rico No Suave here on a one, two, one, two, ready to go. Ooh, I'm super happy to be back with each and every one of you guys, man. And how can I say I'm super happy? I'm super happy. Yes. And of course, everybody, you already know life is always good when you are here back with us here on the Rico No Suave show. You know, um, it's been a long week because it's been a long week because I missed you. Everybody, don't forget to make sure you share this. Don't forget, you know, if if you're just watching this and you want to talk to yourself, you want to agree, you want to disagree, it's okay. 
It's okay, man. You can do that as well, too. But we love you here on the Rico No Suave show. And if it's your first time actually tuning in, thank you guys so much for your support and all the love that you actually have given us as far as here on the Rico No Suave show. Everyone, you know, I'm, I'm surprised because this next thing that we're going to actually pull up is, you know, there's always an awareness month. And awareness month for this one is the National Stalking Awareness Month. Know it, name it, stop it. 2024, you know, one thing that I have to say about this is, is that, you know, safety is always key, right? Safety is always key when it comes down to you being, you know, safe. And also when you got people that actually stalk you. Now, the first thing when you hear about stalking everybody is who's stalking you, right? It just, you know, normally when I think about this, when I hear about this is always that, you know, females um, or ladies, when you're actually walking down the street or you might have, you know, some type of stalker that's actually in love with you or, you know, really want to get your number, want to be able to, you know, just harass you. You know, we, we think I think about that at the very beginning because, you know, of course, you have to be careful in regards to where you're going and what you're doing. Now, also, it comes from another level of how can I say it? Celebrities. You know, celebrities, you have the stalker as well, too. And also when you also had that uh, from a celebrity standpoint, you have to be careful in regards to who's stalking you. Not like TMZ, but, you know, who's ever stalking you and um, trying to put your information out there on uh, the Internet. But, you know, there are people that's out there that, you know, that can actually uh, help you as well, too. So look up your different organizations because there are different organizations maybe that's that's in your city, in your community that will be able to help you when it comes to actually stalking, you know, and you want to, and of course, you have to call the police uh, in regards to if you are having someone that's actually stalking, but just be careful in regards to being out there. But I'm so glad that this is actually the month um, of February that they actually bring that to the attention of stalking Awareness Month. Wow. Wow. So make sure you stay safe. Make sure you stay, you know, uh, healthy. Make sure you're able to run away or make sure you get to somewhere safe and make sure you call for help. Oh, yeah, that's what it is, baby. All right. So let's get down because I got to introduce my man. I got to introduce my man here. Everybody, you know, when it comes down to, you know, you know, when it comes down to this gentleman here, you know, this gentleman has been hitting, I can say he has been hitting the, the industry as a film director, as a film producer, you know, and one of the biggest things about this gentleman that I'm really, really happy that he's actually on my show today is because he's doing it for not just for the community, but also for everyone to be able to enjoy. Now, of course, for my Latinos, do sorry, you got to stand up because I think you guys are going to actually, you know, just go crazy over this gentleman because not only is he a film producer, he's also a director and he's also an actor as well, too. I want you guys to put your hands together for none other than my man, Carlos Moreno Jr. Let's go, baby. Uh -huh. Carlos! Hola, mi mundo. ¿Cómo están, What's up, boys? papa? So glad to be here uh, from the West Coast to everyone that's watching all across the world. Yes, sir. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, yes. I can't wait to have a little discussion. Yes, uh, sir. Because right here we have pura sabrosura. Tu sabe. Let's go. Yes, yes. Pero tu sabe, man, mi sangre ahora. I'm, I'm ready to do some dancing all of a sudden. <laughs> hey, I got, I got the conga here, all right? Don't let me start. <laughs> man, so, you know, thank you so much for being on the Rico No Suave show, man. And, you know, this takes it to another level of, you know, um, of people knowing who you are. Um, and I, I consider you as a celebrity because, I, you know, looking over, you know, everything you have accomplished, looking over everything that you have done, you know, it's just it's amazing, man. It's amazing in regards to what you've done. And I want the whole world to know about it today. So let's get right into it. You ready, Papa? Are you ready or what? Dale gas. OK, let's go. All right. So here we go. So during your first time coming up, you know, as an actor, 
what was your training like? I mean, what, what training did you get into in order to become that actor? Well, I, uh, well training is, is, is at the house. Training is sitting at a, at the, uh, inside a, on a bus. Um, training is wherever you are open to receive because art is all around us. So I'm one of those artists that I'm, I'm always watching and listening and being open. So yeah. training started when you were a kid. You know, you got the mama and the papa, papa, you know, they're doing stuff in the kitchen. You got your uncles and aunts, you got your cousins, you're looking. So well, it starts at a really young age. But, the, you know, you go through high school, you go through college, um, you, you start to, you know, learn your lines. That's what it, or sorry, they say, yeah, memorize your lines is literally learning your lines because when you learn something, you don't forget. Yeah. So uh, a lot of people came into, the, into my world, brother, and, um, all giving me little tips how to how to make myself better, um, but the main thing is anybody can do this. You just gotta be open. You gotta almost like a parrot, kind of see how that person is is, and then you can make it your own. You put your own flavor. You catch me, you know. So that is like the the fundamentals of how I started, just by watching people and making fun of ourselves in a way. Because we are funny. We, we go through yeah. ups and downs, and that's where storytelling comes. And um, so then that is a foundation. And then, of course, you go to acting classes, and then, then you start to build more characters. You start to build characters. And my, um, my mentors, one of them was Milton Katselas. He would say, you have the first circle of, of uh, characters that you know. That, that they're easy for you to, 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 you know, do. For example, with me, it would be a mechanic. <laughs> Sorry. Mm. <laughs> it would be a, a gardener, you know. Those are the easy ones that I, I've done so many of these characters that they're like your first circle of casting, the first circle. Then you have a second circle. And then that second circle is characters that you need to reach out a little bit more. Maybe it has an accent. Maybe, you know, he's uh, the words that the character and you are not, you guys don't kind of speak the same language, meaning maybe it's a doctor or a lawyer or somebody. And yeah. then you have the third circle. And then the last circle is the ones where you really do heavy work, where you're like a ruthless killer, a murderer, or some kind of a, a, an individual that is out there as a character. So, so training goes from the fundamentals of just observing and being present and being open and never judging a character all the way to the expanding yourself even more. Mm. Man, you know, I, when, when I think about people that act, you know, when they're doing, you know, as far as in the training, but, you know, you, you hit it when you're saying at home, you know, it, it does happen. So I guess I've been acting all my life with my mom. <laughs> 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 so i think i think i've been doing that a lot i wonder my mom wanted me to be on a commercial she was like you know she's like you know, my mom called me ricky he's like ricky you know you're gonna be on a commercial i said why mom i said because you have the characteristics like me i was like really what about dad no he's okay you got it more like me <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, for me, it was, you know, it was uh, it was a good thing, you know, as far as knowing that I was at least acting during that time with my characteristics and my personality and being able to uh -huh. at least, you know, get out there. But you're right, though. You know, a lot of it has to do with memorizing and also remembering, you know, as a kid, you know, we kind of remember what our parents teach us. Right. But also it's what happens around the house and then what's on mm -hmm. TV. You know, sometimes right. when you hear stuff on TV, oh, I remember that scene and I could say word for word. And then it just automatically mm -hmm. saying, well, you know what? You, yeah, you're definitely ready for TV because, you know, everything that's on it. So <laughs> exactly. And and if you just if, if those people that are uh, your people that uh, want to do this uh, art, artists yeah. uh, want to be acting or directing or, or but I you know I would rather. I, I would rather work with a director that has been an actor because they know how to talk to actors than a director doesn't know anything. They just, I was like, come on, because it's a headache. But right. even if you just wake up, if you just wake up, okay, just wake up. How do you wake up? And to and, and, and so say, well, you put your left foot first or your right foot out. And then what do you do? You scratch your butt. You go sleepy to go pee. Like all these things are happening that you're not aware of, right? <laughs> 
and I want, and you're gonna be doing this to me when you're up in the morning, and then and then you 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 come back to bed. What do you do? So when I am trying to find just the simplest of of an act uh, character, the first thing I say is, how does this character wake up? How, what is this, what is his routine? See, and then you become you become a a uh, ¿cómo se llama? an investigator trying to yeah. find truth to it, and every yeah. character. Every character is different, man. Every character wakes up different. Some yeah. people wake up with a smile. Some people wake up with this. And even a walk, <laughs> a simple walk. You know, this character walks with his foot more to the left or, you know, he's a little bit more over here. And a lot of actors do not really emphasize on just the way a character just walks because they over, they just think, oh, it's just walking. No, Papa. It yeah. It's serious. And so when you do that, acting should be fun. Yes. It's fun because yes. you're investigating. But if not, then, you know, you just become another actor, which is great. You can make money. But I'm more interested in character development and having fun with the character and investigating all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think you know, becoming an actor, I think that's one of the, the biggest things of being able to know kind of like that role that you fit in a lot of movies. Um, I've seen, mm -hmm. of course, actors that play in certain roles where they play certain you know, roles just in general because they're comfortable with doing that. But then at the same time, too, you have other actors that's like just diverse, you know, all around where they can actually play so many different. You can play a bad guy, a good guy, you know, or from a, a female standpoint, you know, she, she can be flirty. She can be agnostic, you know, she can be, you yeah. know, just, you know, uh, just a hero. You know what I mean? And, you know, and it's just very aggressive. So I really, you know, when I see stuff like that, I really look at it like, man, you guys are really good. That can really do multiple things. And cool. it's funny you say it, getting out the bed and what do you do first, second, third? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, too much information, but even brushing your teeth, they, you have yeah. a way of doing it. And you you do it every day that you don't really think about it. You know, yeah. how you put your, 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 uh, your pants on. Is it the left or the right? You know, and, and you become... <laughs> It becomes a, like this thing. And and I have a lot of my relatives and a lot of my characters, especially Tommy. I have a cousin named Tommy. So he appears in certain of my characters that I use. And I yeah. got my uncle that I play off and uh, other friends of mine. So we actors, we watch and then we, 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 we don't, I don't call it stealing, but you watch, you observe, and then you emulate and then you make it your own with your own signature. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, huh? Have you seen as far as when, when, when you say about signature, it's, you know, it has to be a kind of a, like a unique signature, kind of like where you don't want to be an actor like someone else, but kind of like that, that personality. Um, have you been in a situation where you saw someone really unique and you're like, wow, is that natural or did they have to practice that? No, a lot of people just walk around on the streets looking, looking like that in L.A., I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I don't judge. I don't judge anyone. Uh, because then I'll be judging the character and I'll be judging myself. So that's like rule number one, do not judge. Don't say no, just ask, keep on asking. Um, yeah. No, I don't, I've never, well, I don't know, maybe somebody out there that are, you know, making things up yeah. as themselves, but no, Papa, I, uh, I just, I just love observing people and I take them, uh, even if it's a little bit off, I, I take it for real, man. And, and then I just, you know, make my, I put my own brand, you know, boom, and I stamp it, and then it becomes mine, and then people applaud it. I go to rehearse, uh, auditions or rehearsals, put it on plays, or I write my own character stuff of that. So yeah. art is all around us. You just yeah. got to listen. The music, the writing, yes. all this stuff. That's what makes, I think, art, if people want to do it, real people want to do it, because it's it's like you're almost like a god because you're yeah. creating something. And yeah. it's it's just so fulfilling that there's something and. You know, you're born with it, man. I mean, no, you're just born with it, Papa. That's cool, man. That, and, and I think, I think that for me, I think that's the that's the main thing. And I, I think that's the reason why I like being a talk show host. You know, I can do my whole thing and I actually try to put my own flair to it. You know, a little bongos, a little conga to it. You know. <laughs> So I, I really like, man, I really like what you're saying in regards to that, because acting, you know, should come natural. Right. In some cases, based off of what you're applying for, what you're auditioning for and also who knows you. Right. Like if you know people like you saying, you have people that, you know, that just is sometimes they can just be born with it. It's natural and it just comes really natural itself. 
Now let's talk it from a Latino side. You know, uh, we did have Beatrice Davis. Okay. You know, um, you know, Beatrice Davis had a really good question. She said, "Is it challenging um, to audition as a Latino, uh, particularly in certain roles that may come available?" Hi, Beatrice. Thank you. Uh, roles are it's getting better uh, for us uh, for us Latinos. As a matter of fact, America Ferrara just got nominated for an Oscar. Um, in the movie Barbie, and so uh, that's fantastic. And I, I am a Barbie fan. I, I saw it. And Are I, you? <laughs> I, yeah, I, 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 I. It was during the holidays, bro. I'm like, ¿Qué es esto Barbie? A ver. Oh, and I was like, this is a good movie, you know? This is yeah. This is so, uh, but there's more. There's more. Uh, it's finally opened up. When I first got here, they kept on talking about this Latin. Man, this Latin thing, and it never ever fruition. A lot of us are fighting for one little part. You got Cubans and Puerto Ricans and Mexicans and Hondurans and all of Latin America. They're all coming fighting for that one part. Yeah. Um, so it's up to us to create our own work. It's us. It's us yeah. to create our own. We're the only ones that can do this. Hollywood's yeah. not going to save us. No one's going to. No one's going to save us. We have to do it ourselves. And yeah. and we be very grateful with the technology that we have because. A lot of us would not be able to do this right. if we didn't have iPhones, you know, smaller gadgets, you know, right. sound equipment. Right. We can, and we can create and tell our own stories. Yes, so sir. when I when I go to auditions, um, uh, whatever auditions are, I see a lot more roles coming up and they're not the same. We're more in-depth characters, you know, better, stronger characters that that reveal something about themselves and about humanity with yeah. humor, charm, and sensuality, all that stuff. So it's so much better now than it was when I got here a long time ago. Gotcha. Yeah, I think, you know, I think also um, because when you, of course, when you go to Latin America, you go to a different country, of course, uh, you know, you're there, right? And then, you know, one of my favorite is uh, Diego Luna and Gael Garcia. Um, you know, those are those are two of my favorite. And when I saw them actually play, I forgot the movie that they played uh, together in when they were uh, soccer. Uh, I think it had to do something uh, with uh, with soccer and just to see them play in that role. But then it was actually here in the U.S. Um, you know, when it was, of course, filmed here in the U.S. It was awesome, man. I was like, oh, my God. I was like, man, these two guys, when they work together, when they're doing things together, yeah. it's a it's it's amazing. Imagine. But I'm thinking as far as where Beatrice was going for, and Gringo, thank you, Gringo, for um, tuning in. Uh, Jose, or Gringo, he, I, I got I got <laughs> you got to meet him too. Um, but okay. uh, one one of the thing uh, about you know um, having auditions here where there's different cultures that's going for the same role. Um, what have you found yourself in a situation where that can be an issue for you as a Latino? Well, normally they say in the auditions what kind of a character they're looking for. If they want okay. more of a Honduran looking, they want more uh, something. They just bring a whole bunch of people. I, I don't. Uh, uh, so you just gotta go and you gotta show them what you are, who you are. Don't apologize for your work, and it, it will all be. You know, it's up to the producers to decide at the very end. You have nothing to do. You just go in there and do your work to the best of your ability. You give it all. Everything you've learned, you apply it and you put a stamp on it with a smile on your face. And then you go out and celebrate. You don't think about it because then it drives yeah. you crazy. Um, so but what I'm really enjoying is like there's a lot more Latinos that are coming from Latin America and they're all coming here. And I love them all because they bring so much from stuff that I don't know in their perspective countries like the Venezuela, yeah. you know, some, uh, uh, Salvador actors, and they come here and I welcome them. Some of them, you know, are, I know them and I, I get to learn a little bit more about their perspective country. So it's very rich. And I think what Hollywood has a problem is they don't know what to do with us because there's so many and there's so many different things and they just call us one thing and they're like, they do this and then hopefully everything goes okay. Yeah. But it's up to us to bring those stories from Honduras it's up to us to bring the stories from different countries and show that, you know, it's a huge melting pot in the in the Latino population. And America yeah. is where we can do all that, all this right here, because this is the place where everybody shows up from different countries. 
Get that melting pot going on, Papa. You already know. Get that melting pot, that paella. <laughs> you know, get that paella. You know. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> that guisao. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, you know, hey, you know, because we we have to, you know, and bro, we'll be we'll be talking for like two hours straight. But uh, one thing about before we take a, a a quick commercial break, but one of the things is is that. Um, when you're when you're acting and you having that training that once you start getting into the rhythm of certain roles and things that you're playing in and things that I like about your bio and you know as a and we'll talk a little bit about that that you've hit so many different type of from commercials to TV shows to movies where you were able to play within their, um, certain scenes in certain areas that just makes you just so universal right and that's one of the things I was like man. I'm like, Galito, man. I was like, Galito. I was like, he he got it, man. I'm like, this guy, he has it all the way. So I'm like, you know, I'm proud of you. You know, I'm definitely proud uh -huh. of you in, in regards to that. So has there been when you were actually, we saw training at home, I guess, and then when you started getting out in the open for training, was there anyone that influenced you that you looked up to um, as an actor coming up? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's been several you know we i believe in mentorship um i never had a mentor that i looked up to until i was like 31 okay. i think and uh he was the one that opened up stuff for me he was the one that said to me you got to be better than everybody else in this room right here this theater room because you're gonna it's you got to be a director you're gonna be an actor not just an actor director a writer producer everything because yeah. it's not gonna come so easy for you it's challenging because that's just the nature of the industry in Hollywood. And so I said, all right, they don't want me in, on their table. I'm going to make my own table, my own CS or whatever. And I'm going to make my own, you know, uh, room with artists and, and, and do it, do it the, the only way that I know. So it was that mentor that pushed me, that like made me really go for it. No apologies. I went through tears. I went through, uh, you know, insanity because we actors, we do have to have a little bit of insanity to be doing what we're doing because it's, it's, there's a lot of rejection like most yeah. of us we are rejected more than any others so yeah. that mentor he's no longer with us his name was Milton Katselas was probably the one that really said Carlos you can do it all yeah. you gotta do is just believe Papa believe it with hearts and hearts will follow and I was yes, like sir. whoa this guy so he was the one that really struck I started to think of myself as an actor more than anything at the age of 30 that's awesome, man. You know, I, I think it's never, you know, and big shout out to him as well, too, because it's yeah. never, too, never too late for someone to actually uh, help you get on that path, that road for you to be able to say, you know what, man, when I thought that I was actually going to be down, I had this guy to actually bring me back up and I was loving it. Right. And I loved it because he actually picked me back up to be able to continue to do what I really needed to hear but also what uh -huh. I really needed to do. Right. Absolutely. And that, right. That's um, and that's powerful, man. That's how also, man, I tell you, that's that's where you just feel <laughs> like, oh, man, OK, I got my I got my bloodstream back again. I got it back. So I'm, I'm super ready to get back into it. But I'm super happy that he kept you going because, man, just just look at what you're doing yeah. now. Um, and of course, can't wait to to, to hear yeah. more uh, about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'll, I'll tell a little bit of story about yes, John, uh, uh, when I was at, uh, at in um, class. It was the very beginning. It was at the Beverly Hills Playhouse. Um, Giovanni Rubisci, I don't know if you know him, a really great, talented actor. He was studying there and he did an amazing scene. And uh, he was actually peeing on stage. And I was like, what? What? what the? Are you what? And because it, it was real, like they rehearsed it all. And Milton was directing the scene. And it was real, man. It was the best acting that I've seen has been on stage at that class, at that school. So uh, everybody applauded. Jovan went out, you know, and I followed him. I was so nervous because it was just like brand new in the class. So I go, hey, Giovanni, um, Carlos, uh, bro, what you did, you just killed it. Like, how do I, how do I, how do I do it? Like, how do I become like what you just did, man? You just threw it on. I've never seen that. And I was, he goes, hey, hey. What you gotta do is you gotta study with the master for at least ten years. So I was like, oh, I just got here, dude. So, so, but I studied with him for eight, 
eight years before he passed away. So I needed two more. Por eso me falta. I need two more. Where are you? <laughs> but but it, it was just such like that's how long it takes, man, for a lot of us, bro. It's it's wow. the work. I think it's a lot of emotions. It's a lot of thinking and, you know, risks. Well, you know, we always say, you know, if you never take the risk, you never know where you're going. Right. Um, yep. So I think I think for us, I think when it comes down to um, trying to figure out as far as where we want to go and you see something just odd. Right. You see something odd right. just out of the blue and you're like, whoa, what is this? Where did this come from? I've never seen anything like this uh, before. And then, you know, for someone to be able to be that comfortable uh, to be able to do that. And uh -huh. I think it's also acknowledgement of if you take that risk and then someone acknowledges and says, hey, you know what, man, that was awesome, bro. You got to keep doing that because that's what's getting, <laughs> that's going to get you more views. It's going to get you as far as more people. That's yeah. going to get you more money. And well, shoot, uh, if you say it like that, I think I'm going to keep going and doing my thing, you know? Um, yeah. And, Absolutely. you know, it's weird though, but yeah. <laughs> It's tough, man. But like, you know, what the, the, the thing that he did instill, and I think if there's something that I would I would tell in, any or people that come in my last two viewers or interviews, it's just it's just a simple word, man. And it's believe. And he would say the more you to me, he said, you, you just need to believe that's it. You, you, you got it. You just go. It's so hard to get because it's just a simple word that you think that's it. That's all I got to do. Really? Right. It is because the more you believe, the more you create, the more you create, the more you believe. That's what he would say. So it's a cycle of, a, of an actor, director or writer that if you believe more, you create more. And it's a, a circle. And then voila, it, it just lands in there and then people are applauding you and you're like, I didn't do anything. I just believe. So simple. Wow. Wow. You know, I... <laughs> You know, I, you know, it's, it's just, it's just amazing how people can get so comfortable and do something that can be very uncomfortable for us to see, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And I, I think is if they're in their own body, they're in their own frame and they actually, like I said, the acknowledgement is key. Like if they're able to acknowledge what they actually have done and, and it, it brings in whatever it brings in for them to be happy. You know, what I mean, like, hey, you know, they always say uh, your body, your choice. Well, <laughs> in this case, we'll yeah, take your and, body where it needs to go, you know. And you just say you, you, you nailed it, brother. It, it's it, art lies in the choices that you make yes, as sir. an artist. So it, 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 the choices is what creates your uniqueness in music and writing and everything. So do the right do the do the choices and that's what it's like that you know that little thing that's just perfect that you land and then voila yo uh, through sorry man you know it's all about the choices but it's also about you know when you make that decision you're like boom you know is this the right decision or is this the wrong decision and then you know we we go from there but you know it's 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 about how you how you evaluate mm -hmm. that. But you as an mm -hmm. actor for yourself, of course, you made those choices. And and once again, man, you took your you took yourself where you needed to be able to get into by your mentor yeah. in order to to continue to move. Hey, Carlos, man, we got to take a quick commercial break, man, because you know what? I'm telling you, we need more than just one hour up in here. We need more than <laughs> two hours, Papa. All right, everybody, we, you already know we got my man Carlos Moreno Jr. here, the film director, producer, and actor. Stay tuned. We'll be back after these commercials. Let's go.
Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. It's your boy Rico No Suave here with none other than my man Carlos Moreno Jr. Let's get it on, baby. You already know I'm super happy, man. I'm always super happy because you know why? It's it's us and we're standing up and we're having a great time. Carlos, are you having a good time, Papa? Absolutely, Papa. I'm having a fantastic time. Um, uh, this is one of my my things. It's just like. Uh, you know, filmmaking is, is like a, a, a la la land for me. Like I, I going into that world and enjoying it and sharing it with others and bring happiness with the or crying. You know, make you think. It's it's such a gift, dude. You're yeah. you're all gifts. Uh, every single one of us. Uh, every artist is a gift. So yes, sir. Glad to yes, be back. Sir. Yes, sir. You know, you know. Let's let's get right into it because I'm super happy to talk about this next phase in your life. So when we're talking about acting. And, you know, of course, being in movies and being in TV shows and being a supporter, blah, blah, blah. When we go into film producing and film directing, when did that come into play after you became an actor? Because <laughs> <laughs> this is my line whenever, whenever... Whenever I'm doing all this stuff, I go like this to the cast and crew when I'm directing and producing like my stuff. I just go, I just wanted to, <laughs> I didn't want to do any of this. Why am I doing this? Because it's a lot of work, man. Um, uh, so I, I figured that I had to tell my own, my own stories. And uh, I started uh, doing short films um for myself in the beginning i think the first one was called habanero and actually milton helped me with that one um it, but it was very very dark uh it was a short film and what i what i what i wanted to do is i wanted to prove myself that i could be in front of the camera and behind the camera and tell a story but it's insane i mean i, I how so i i started to bring my friends and started working you know little little by little and then um, mo moving forward to festivals, we went to I went to festivals with the, that particular film. And I got some more film, more shorts and more, more shorts and more shorts. I think I've done 18 now, all gone to festivals. I've been all around the, the world with the with all these shorts. Um, and now, I, you know, I've been I've been doing um, a series recently. And how it transpired was the very beginning was Milton said, you need to start directing scenes in class. And I, I thought I was going to pull my hair because I go, I don't I don't know this. So then he also said, I want you to do scenes with these new new students that are coming. And I'm like, why are you putting me on with the new students that are coming? I, <laughs> I want to work with the star of the celebrities in the other class. And maybe it was the uh, me, him telling me that I could bring actors from their green and I could help them really quickly to, to learn to get to the process. Yeah. So it was that working with these actors and then working, uh, writing, creating my own shorts. And then the internet showed up, the, you know, social media showed up and YouTube showed up and, and now it's the wild west, man. I mean, you got Netflix and all this stuff. So there's tons of stories out there. Why I always tell people is this, is um, there's a lot of work out there. Um, and I'm very happy that there's a lot of stories, but some of the work is, uh, you don't, there's too much noise. There's too many right now, I think in the, in the industry, cause it's wild right now. They don't know what to do with us. That the only way that you can be heard is like that radio station, you know, when you're tuning a radio station with a little dial and you're trying to get that yes. some music uh -huh. station. And, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. yes. <laughs> and then you get it for a little second and then it goes, well, that's what artists need to be now. You gotta be that station that they're really reaching and it's like solid once you're there, like yeah. boom, it yeah. gets you. So I aspire with my work to bring all of that so that I can do all the static that's in the radio and then you'll hear the radio station loud and clear. Ooh, ooh, that's deep. Carlos, man, that's deep. <laughs> it's called T, sorry, Chacho. it's called T. <laughs> hey, <laughs> so, <laughs> you, know, you know, Carlos, that's pretty deep. And, and the reason why I say that's pretty deep is because you never know when people have to tune in to be able to understand who they're listening to. And also mm -hmm. sometimes don't un people don't understand as far as where there's a director that they need to tune into to be on that same frequency, bah, bah. You know, yes. I, think, I think what, what you're at, what you're doing and using that analogy, man, I just, 
I'm thinking about how you're talking about how you're tuning in. That's everyday life, though. Like we, and you might as well say, like when we were little, we were being, we were learning how to be directed by our parents, and then when we we're right. actually growing up, we were directed in regards to what we saw around us in regards to which path do I direct myself to go this way or that way. Then yep. all of a sudden, yeah, you start getting to become an actor, and then this person comes and says, "Hey, we want you to actually direct these other." students that's actually mm -hmm. coming up where you actually have directors and celebrities that's on the other side, but your time right. wasn't yet. And then you automatically had to say, Hey, you know what? I was there at one point in time. Let me direct them so they can actually be able to come up. But you were actually looking at tuning in all along. You was in yeah. the radio state. You was on the radio all the way. I mean, <laughs> come on, yeah. Carlitos. Come on, man. Yeah. 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 It, and it's, and it's that, it's that, um, it, it it's, it's the belief when you're working because sometimes I, you just assume the position, man. You just do it. Yeah. And then uh, somehow it works out. But I was watching um, one of these. I don't know, I can't remember the name of the film. I think it's called Dynamite. Dol Dynamite. It was a, a film that came a, a couple of years ago. And one of the actors uh, that that was doing the Q&A, um, he, he said that it took him 10 years to do this film. 10 years, Dolomite, famous comedian, you know, used to talk in the 60s or 70s, used to buy these albums back. What, did you say Dolomite? Yeah, Dolomite. Oh, yeah, Dolomite. Dolomite. Yeah, the comedian, Dolomite. Oh, man. Dolomite. <laughs> yeah. Classic guy, dude, like a huge, you know, guy that just opened a lot. Well, Eddie Murphy was talking in this in this Q&A, and he was saying um, a couple of things. He said, you know, it took him 10 years to do this film and um, he apparently died, the Dolomite guy. So he never got to see yep. the film, but he knew that it was in the process. And then and then he said also, um, you know, you're watching TV and you go to Netflix or the Hulu or whatever is the new thing now to be. And um, you are pressing the button and you're going, oh, my God, there's so many movies out there. Like and you, you give him like two, three seconds. Right. And then you go to the next one. And then, and then you see one go like, what the hell were they thinking? Are you serious? <laughs> this monster right here coming out of the side and it's talking and it's like a dead twin. And I'm, what? Who, who, who gave this in the go? And then Eddie yeah. Murphy said, somebody believed it so much that he got other people believing it. Wow. And guess what? Now you're forced to watch it on TV. <laughs> so it takes, so it takes that amount of belief, bro. Yes. To do thing so yes. whatever you do you know you got to believe it more than anybody else otherwise you're not gonna make it you're not gonna they're they're because they, audience are like watching is like no that's not the way me and my wife make love that's not that's fake they, <laughs> they, they know they, they know the audience is very smart nowadays they're not like how they used to be you know back in the day it was just jaws or you know simple little things like that and it was it no dude these, these uh, audience now they're like ruthless man they're, they will tell you shut it down but somebody had to believe it so much yeah more than it's to sell it bro yeah wow that's deep, man. I like that, Papa. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Dolomite, man. You hit me with the Dolomite on that one, cause oh, that, yeah. that that Dolomite. And then I saw the the remake of it with Eddie Murphy, and it was wow. It was it was interesting. It was interesting, but you know, Dolomite was was a character behind himself. You know, he was he yeah. was his own way. And wow, yeah, I like that. You know, I do have to get to some comments that's actually here because. Um, you know, Beatrice also threw another comment, which was, uh, or a question, I should say. She says, are agents more open to accepting Latino actors for representation? Yes, the answer is yes. Okay. Uh, they are so much more open because uh, of the content that's being bombarded, especially now that Hollywood just opened, because it literally just opened about, what, a week, two weeks ago? Uh, we were closed, you know, through the yeah. whole strike. Um, right. And then the holidays came and they kind of opened a little bit. But now it's full on force, tons of auditions. Agents are looking everywhere. Um, and uh, we, there is there's room now. Um, you, you're seeing a lot more Latinos, all sorts of minorities, not just Latinos, um, film right now, TV. And it's because there are roles. We have writers that are writing for us now. There are Latino writers that are in the room and they're writing roles for us. And that's also very important because, you know, 
it's kind of something that you might not know the culture so you yeah. know you don't want to write that because it's it's more uh, politically uh, incorrect to do so so they bring uh, all different sorts of writers from different nationalities to create so i think it's been so that's why you see a lot of us um now coming in it's going to get better uh, i right. only see that because i i've been watching or I, you know my manager tells me there's this role there's you know, things are happening um this is it this is what we've been waiting for i've been waiting for yes, about sir. 30 years 30 years yes, sir. I like that, man. I like that, man. Thank you so much for that. You know, I do have to throw this out there because Gringo has been El Gringo Jose Echevarria, man. He's been with uh, the show for many years, and I do have to bring this up because he do, he he has a great book. Um, it is um, and it's a it's a story, of course, here in Chicago called The Real Dance Fever. Um, and he's the author of that as well, too. Um, and I definitely want you to, you know, um, to read this book as well, because it, it tells a, a lot about the Chicago life and the history, of course, when it comes to house music and things like that. But it's such a great, such a great um, book to actually read. So, yeah, you know, Jose, you know, we got you, Papa, here on the Rico No uh, Show. Wait, wait, so. did, you just say, did you just see, did you just say house music? House music all night long. Uh, I that's my stuff, bro. Let's go, let's go, <laughs> that's, let's that's, go. That's 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 my type of music. I'm a deep house music, you know. Absolutely, it gets you there. You have a lot of fun with it. It sings to the soul. That's what I call it. It's it's resonating with the soul. So thank you, uh, yes. Gringo. Right? Uh, thank you for that. Yes, yes. I would love to read, yes. uh, see what it is with the uh, Chicago. Um, uh, I know it's it, it, it be, there's different types of house music. There's New York and then there's Chicago. Um, yeah. uh, I think Detroit too. So I believe there's three different areas. Correct? Yeah. So you know, you know, we consider it as Chicago is the mecca of house music. So uh, when, okay, when you okay. put it in a certain order, Papa, you got to say Chicago <laughs> first. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we you know we we, we kind of like when it comes to deep house um you know chicago is and then of course a lot of dance groups that's actually here but but yeah papa i gotta hook you up i gotta hook you up with that uh gotta get Thank to you. some more uh I, I have to give um some more there's some more comments uh that's here i believe that there's still uh still a stigma hispanics and actors of color having uh to be dealt with meaning that as far as in this of course, when it's talking about the black and brown, as far as how many roles mm -hmm. that, that's actually out there to be able to get more exposure for the black and brown out there. And that was from Beatrice. So, yeah, Beatrice, you're definitely right yeah. in regards to that. That's for sure. Yeah, it, it's it's true. Uh, the the um, the stigma that we have, it's up to, again, I use a lot of humor in my work to unstigmatize us. Yeah, uh, I make us more with humanity. There's more. And, and, you know, like I said, I had this reading yesterday called uh, La Lengua del Diablo, the Devil's Tongue. Yep. It's a dark comic. It's a dark. Yep. And um, uh, I don't stereotype anybody in that. It's if I do, I, I make it fun so that it it's, gets unstereotyped. And and um, but, yeah, the the brungler that going back to. To that, Beatrice, I did have a, a hard time in the industry when I first started with my skin color because uh, they, didn't, they didn't know what to do with me. They, I'm yeah. Latin enough. Or I'm not black enough. Or I don't know. What the yeah. heck. So, they're like, so I had to do my own, you know, characters and I had to show them. Um, but it's it's getting there with the unstigmatizing us. Um, but uh, we'll see what happens in the next few years. I'm hoping with more stories that will come, um, it, it, it'll like uh, not be so the way it has been throughout Hollywood in the past. Yeah, yeah. Great, great comment, great, great comment on that because I mean, once again, that's one of those uh, comments that we can talk about for, uh, you know, a <laughs> long time when it comes to what's been happening as far as in the industry uh, itself. But you know what also is in the industry, sir? I gotta take another break because it's time for NASCAR. Baby, you already know it's Carlos Moreno Jr. here with us today. Yeah, baby. So super happy. Hold on. Hold on for a little bit. Bye-bye. We're going to get right back to you. All right, everybody. This is NASCAR Moments. Ooh-wee. NASCAR Moments, man. Rico No Suave Show. <laughs> we are super happy to be a part of the Rico No Suave Show all the time. 
every day, every night, whatever. Yeah, so, you know, because it all started with Chicago uh, and then off to Las Vegas, we're going to be doing it again. But today, I got something for you, everybody. This one here is Rolex, Rolex 24 Ooh. Daytona. Did you know that there's NASCAR drivers that's actually driving within the Daytona, the Rolex 24? Because they're NASCAR drivers, it's not NASCAR affiliate, but they're actually NASCAR drivers that actually participate in a 24-hour race competition. Man, you know, and this has been going on since the 1960s, everybody. So we're going to uh, pull up that next slide here. So this one was actually 1989. John uh, Adretti won his class in a Porsche 962 along with Bob Wolek and Derek Bell. Shown, this was shown in 2012, number 36 GT Mazda RX, uh, RX8 team with Jerry Andretti. Taylor McQuad, uh, Haquad, and Anders Kron racing with the number 56 AF Wall Trip Ferrari 458, driven by my man Robert Kaufman, Michael Wall Trip, Travis Pastrana, and Rui Arguas. Man, let's go. This is awesome, yeah. man. So, you know, those cars are beautiful. You know, I, I tell you, the cars are beautiful when it comes down to racing. And then we get to this next one. This next one here, everybody, you know, there's a celebration. 24 hours Rolex, everybody. It's the Rolex. Just like you have the watch, the Rolex, you know, they got money. So 1995, Mark Martin won 1995, 24 hour of Daytona International Speedway. Now, guys, just so you guys know, when they actually do this as far as on a speedway, it's 3.6 something miles that they're actually, and it's over 800 laps that they're actually doing this. And of course, it's all about teams, but imagine it's 24 hours of driving. And also, they also call this endurance as well, too. So this is also part of the endurance factor of when they're actually out there. And once again, man, I tell you, big shout out to the people that's actually in NASCAR that actually goes out there in Daytona to do the Rolex 24 hour race competition. And that was the NASCAR moments, everybody. Yeah, yeah baby. Yes. Yes. Carlos, did you like that? Yes. Did you like that, man? You, you know what? Some of those cars were beautiful, man. It's like I, 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 you were where you were talking. I was thinking about what twenty four hours. Like you need a team, man, and that's that's what I always put everything into my field. It's like they're successful. They do twenty four hours. They need a whole team. They're yeah. all in the belief situation. They're all like we're going for it. We're going for it. It's the same thing applies to us on the other end. Yeah. Uh, it's the same thing. It's, it's that same camaraderie because. It takes a, a team to to help you to to become. I mean, to be in front of this show, for example. Yes, sir. Had to go through certain people, so it's it's a team that always makes it, man. Yes, sir. Man, those cars are fantastic. I, I wanted to go to Vegas, but I couldn't get. <laughs> yeah, and I was the one. I was at the one in Vegas. So this last one, uh, that was ah. in October. I was the one covering as far as with the media and photos and videos for it as well too. And. Man, it's it's amazing, man. It, it's amazing. We I, produced a yeah. we produced a really great highlight that's on our website. So um, yeah, you got to check that out as well too. But out. Papa, we got to get back to you because we're down to our last few minutes of fame already, man. Dang, I tell you, Chacho, man, we need more time. Okay, you know what? We're gonna get to. We got to get to your films, right? Let's talk about. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> like, we got to. I know, I know. Every time I think about the day, man, and <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, because you have it separately. We got Pepito, and if everybody don't know what Pepito, uh, America, and Pepito Mamadas. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you know we got to talk about that. So talk to us about those films. Okay, so really quick, this is uh, my buddy right here is uh, uh, Pepito. It's actually me when I was a little kid, um, mm -hmm. and somebody made a cartoon because eventually we're going to make him talk yeah. uh, as a flashback. So Pepito, basically, I wanted to unite all Latinos under the world, you know, because everybody says, I'm big, you know, Venezuelans are better than this and that, and mm -hmm. Cubans are better than Puerto Rican, you name it. 
So I wanted to bring all of us as an artist. And I said, well, who, what can it be? And then I said, wait a minute. Everybody knows Pepita jokes. They've been around for a hundred years. I mean, even my grandparents are no longer here. They knew these jokes. Yeah. The young kids know it. You know, the new generation might not know because, you know, it's a little, they're Latin. They're, you know, it's Latin. And I believe in Cuba, his name is Jaimito and Juanito in another place. But I uh -huh. like the word Pepito. So I came out, it was called Pepito. It's called Pepito's America. We're in our second season. Um, the word I had to use mamalas because mamalas means, you know, it's double entendrance and Pepito jokes always have double entendrance. He's this little yeah. boy, like a Johnny kind of or Bart Simpson. And he was our first superhero. If you want to think about him like this, he was the first guy that made us go, huh? what was that? And yeah. I wanted to bring joy into our culture with our first superhero that's been around with us for a hundred years and make here in America, uh -huh. bring this to America with with success. So we were considered for an Emmy this year and we're going for the second season this coming year. Awesome, man. Awesome. You know, I got to put up I got to put up the photo of, you know, with <laughs> that you sent me. And I love it, man, because you have Pepito. I think Pepito's on your show. Yeah. Then. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. And I love yeah. this one, man. This is so cool. I, I really love this photo of, of Pepito. And, you know, also, I always thought about when you, when you're used, when I used to read the, the cartoons in the papers, you know, there was Dennis the Menace. Right. And then I thought about Pepito, of course, on the Latin side that, you know, they were always either getting into something or it was that he was responding back to something that Somebody. was as a joke. Right. And, yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot of them. There's thousands and thousands, millions of uh, I would say hundreds of thousands of jokes. Yeah. Um, uh, by yeah. the way, I did. I do I'm missing a tooth. It's a long story. I'm not gonna tell you this for something else. Um, but Pepito doesn't have a tooth in the in the season in the in the actual show. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, where we go right now, um, you can still see the episodes on my uh, Carlos Martin you know, website. Uh, we have to pull it out from YouTube because we're in talks and. You know, we might have a whole show. Hopefully, we'll see this year uh, completely. You know, thirty minutes, Pepito all the way. Uh, but uh, you can still see at least three episodes on my website for a limited amount of time. Okay. Um, the second season will be coming out uh, shortly, probably before May, the beginning of May. So let me ask you a question. So when it comes to, um, so when it comes to actually having multiple like series like you know there's movies and then you got the series right mm -hmm. it almost like when you have a movie of course it's all one and then you have the series where we're just waiting for more and more and more of in this case pepito right um Man. in this case what makes you go down the direction of are you going to actually make a movie? I don't know if you can actually say it but is it more of a TV uh series? It, it's uh, so it's or? Yeah, I think I know where you're, you're heading. Um, yeah, bro, like it's been all over the place for like a few years. Uh, I wanted to make it into a. T I did it as a play. I did okay. it as a series. I did it as a. If you want to make a movie? I'll do a movie. Um, I have no problems. I'll go for it. Uh, the the series, the thirty minute series, because right now you know Pepito has grown up, so he's a man and he's insane. Like he's got issues. Like we all have issues. Yes. So yeah. he, it, you can imagine all those jokes from that little kid now a man and, and you know he's here and, and he lives in LA and you know he's he goes through problems he has mental issues he's got uh, 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 issues with his grandma and all this other stuff with friends he's just trying to survive I want you to see yourself in him either if you're a woman or a man it doesn't matter because we're all going through these things so there's tons of, of, of a humor and I thought putting it as a TV show I have more uh, I can do more with it in 30 minutes instead of just the movie. But the, the the actual pilot pilot, I've not been able to produce. So I decided to call it Mamalas because these are just right. little clips of possibility of what the show can be. And yeah. I said, no one's going to stop me. Hollywood's not going to stop me. I'm going to, I know I raised money to do the episodes on my own. I did it all on my own. I wrote them. I produced them. I, I directed, I edited all these, everything you see in there is literally my soul. Yeah. Um, and and it's it, it, it works. So we were considered for an Emmy. We're going to go through this year. 
it'll be on YouTube. If not on YouTube, it'll be in one of these platforms that I that we have right now. Gotcha. I like that, man. I like that. That's hot. You know, and and I, there's so many things where you think about, hey, you know, which way do I really want to go with this, right? And you know, and right. so many ways of being able to make this because. This can technically be a movie. And, you know, if you're ever looking for someone like Rico No Suave to be there. Hell yeah. But you know, just please let me know. You know, <laughs> I might be able to get him. I might be able to get him for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Pepito has many. Uh, he has a lot of friends. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. So he's like, hey, I need something. Oh, don't worry. I got a friend who married. You know, mi primo who knows somebody in Chicago, his name is Rico No Suave. Don't worry, he's going to handle you, right? okay? So he, that's how he rolls, dude. And I believe you had a guest here. Her name is Jacqueline Murphy. That's and right. She played, yes. she played, thank you, Jacqueline. Um, yes. She played a, a mayor, or she's running for a candidate of mayor of Los Angeles. Yeah. And um, Iris Pepito's production companies, which is called La Huevo Productions. Okay. And we have to make. We had to make this 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 commercial, um, and it, it's insane because he's not professional enough. But he's making his friends come in, and, and basically, it's Carlos's lives. You know, I'm basically writing on stuff, man. Um, mm -hmm. and, but it's fun <laughs> to watch them succeed or fail because that's what life is, and you're with them. And then you go to the next, and they're all little mamales. They're little shorts. They're like anywhere from you know uh, five four minutes to maybe. 10 minutes and yeah. um you every time you see one you you're waiting for the next one because you want to know what other what other situations is going to go through <laughs> and how yeah. they, and um you know i, I want to explore more there's one called cochino hills that will be the first one for the next season yeah um there's a place here called chino hills but i called it cochino hills and there's a reason <laughs> why uh <laughs> 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 <he's speaking Spanish. laughs> that's a double entendre and he plays loteria <laughs> Bingo, Loteria Spanish with little frijoles, little beans and stuff. So I'm sure you'll 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 enjoy that one. Yes, and then sir. we have we have Nitwits, Cochino Hills coming up, Freakiado Friday and a spooky Saturday, Guacamole, and then there's one that I haven't titled yet. So those are the titles for the next ones that are coming. My man. My man. Oh man. Um yeah, you know, dude, I had such a blast with you. But I got I got one more other uh, one last question. And of course, we got to get out of here. But I have something for you. Um, Patty Escobar from Colombia. And, you know, Escobar, uh, she said if he had to pick of the litter, who would well, who would be the ideal actor or actress that you would want to work with? All the greats. All the greats. Um, some of them are no longer here. But right now will be Al Pacino, nice. Merle Streep. Meryl Streep, that woman, wow. Angela Bassett, I met her three times, wow. Angela Bassett. Um, and I would like to also work with uh, the, the, este, se me olvidó el nombre, he's a director from, um, uh, he did Pinocchio recently. Um, uh, he's a big time director. Those are the main people. And the reason why, because the, these people have worked so much that yes. even when they just show up, man, yeah. voila, they, they don't have to do that much. It's all art. So That's natural. Those are probably the, the, the three that I would like to work with. Yeah. Nice. You know who else you might want to work with? It's me, yep. baby. This is for you, Papa. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have, this is your uniform, man. This is your uniform, Papa. Hey, this is your uniform. Hey, Say it really? again. That's for me? That's for you. This is for you. You know what? You I'm know why, Carlos? To I'm going to put it in an episode. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You know, you know, us in the back end that, you know, uh, for my producers who I'm, you know, very happy, you know, in the back end and that that we when we publish each one of our shows and we have the gems of the world. One of the things about this is, is that everything that you have done from supporting, I know we didn't touch on it, but, you know, being a supporting actor, being a star, being a co-star. Um, doing commercials, you know, um, also being leads, as well as from when you were training, gracias, you know, para tu padre, también, and, you know, and everybody that you have touched when it comes to you helping to direct of new people that's coming up as well, too. 
this right here, this shirt represents you and your recognition of uh, everything that you have done, man. So welcome to the show, Papa. This is for uh -huh. you. And of course, I will have to either um, fly over there to give this to you or I will mail it. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go, man. Let's go. You almost got me cheered up, man. Stop it. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Carlos, you deserve it, Papa. You deserve it, man. And and when I say this, I mean this from the bottom of my heart, because once again, you know, just watching you and seeing what you're doing, you know, um, and it's the ultimate goal for us. You inspire me to continue to get close to that red carpet of being able to do those interviews, to be able to get there. And so people can recognize, you know, the goodness that we bring to the world, man. So you definitely deserve this. That's for sure. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for that kindly. And uh, I want to thank uh, your viewers as well. Thank yes. you for allowing me a little bit to come into your space. It is a blessing and I'm really, really grateful. Gracias. Mil gracias. Mi mundo. Yes, sir. Tu sabe, man. And we got to put up your social media because people need to be able to support you from this show as well, too. So we got your first one, your Facebook. You already know, actor Carlos Moreno Jr. Make sure you go ahead and follow him. Add him. Don't spam him. Just make sure <laughs> that it's not about the spam. Just make sure you're doing business. If you want to become an actor, you want to be uh, a supporter of what he's doing, please make sure you said you saw him here on the Rico No Suave show. Let's get to that next one. You already know we on Instagram, Instagram at Carlos Moreno Jr. Make sure you go ahead and follow him and then send him a message. Say, hey, man, I saw you on the Rico No Suave show. You're doing great stuff. And please make sure you continue to support. And last but not least, you got to check out his beautiful website, man. This is everything that you can imagine that's on there. He has a plethora of everything and of course you know he's on imdb but it's carlos moreno jr.com make sure you go ahead and support him show him that love because that's what it's all about papa yes it's been a pleasure man it's been a pleasure thank you brother it's yes been a pleasure. it's been a pleasure i want you to hold on for a second but we gotta we gotta let you go off for of the show but everybody put your hands together for none other than the film director the film producer and the actor his name is carlos moreno jr let's go Thank you. Thank you, right, guys. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Everybody, Nos we got to get out of here. You already know your boy Rico No Suave here on the 1212. I hope you guys enjoyed yourself today because I had a blast with none other. And I've been looking forward to this because you know why? I love film directors that's actually doing great things out there. And of course, how could you not like Pepito Mamadas, huh? Pepito <laughs> America. How could you not like that? So we got to put up our social media, everybody. So, hey, our social media is our website. You already know, www.ricoNosuaveShow.com. Make sure you go ahead and follow us there. We're always upgrading. We're always updating. So stay informed with that. Here's our next one. You know, we got Instagram, too. Yes, at Rico no Suave Show. Go ahead and follow us there on Rico no Suave Show. And please make sure you support us there. Here's the next one. Oh, yeah. Facebook, you know, they said, hey, come on back home. Rico No Suave Show. Make sure you go ahead and like and love everything we're doing there. And, you know, our next one is our big one. Please make sure you go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rico No Suave Show. That is where we're at. And, of course, we're, we're uploading shorts and all that great stuff. Last but not least, we have MixCloud.com slash Rico No Suave Show. So, please make sure you go there if you like the audio piece. This turns into audio, so you'll be driving and you can actually listen to this interview for today. Everybody, we got to get out of here, everybody, and had such a great time with each and every one of you guys. Thank you guys so much for your support and all your love. But we got to get out of here as we end off the show just like this.